been on a trampoline? Well, if you have, you'll know what a good bounce you can get from one. This is Joanne Watson. She's becoming quite an expert in using the bounce that she gets from the trampoline. She's good, isn't she? You know, I've never been on a trampoline, but I've been finding out how it works. Now, first of all, there are lots of things that stretch. This piece of plasticine, for example. When I pull it, it stretches. When I let go, it stays stretched. Now, on the other hand, this elastic band, well, it stretches easily enough. When I let go, out. It goes back to its original shape and with some force. Stretch and then recovers its original shape stretch and recover. When something recovers its shape after being stretched... And when something recovers its shape after being squashed... We say they're elastic. Elastic things can recover their shape very quickly after being stretched and sometimes with a lot of force. And it's because of elasticity that Joanne gets her bounce on the trampoline. Let's have a look at her again, this time in slow motion. The sheet of the trampoline is elastic. You can see how much it stretches. And when it recovers, it helps to push Joanne high into the air. Joanne's clothes are also elastic. They stretch as her body bends. Stretch and recover. And skin is elastic as well. If it wasn't, it would split when she did this. Joanne also gets help with her bounce from the springs as they recover. And because springs are elastic and recover their shape, we can use them for weighing things. Eight stone ten. Well, there are all sorts of weighing machine, but the ones we're looking at today all use springs. Like the ones in the post office. In the kitchen. In the bank. In the supermarket. And this one. And it's even called a spring balance. Put a weight on the hook and spring stretches. Take the weight off the hook and the spring recovers to its original shape. Now this is very important in a weighing machine. Look at the pointer, it's at zero. As the spring stretches, the pointer moves down to record the weight, 104 grams. Take the weight off the hook and the spring goes back to zero. After it's been stretched, the spring always recovers and the pointer always goes back to zero. Now, because this pointer moves around a dial, you may think there are no springs. Let's have a look inside. You can see quite clearly there's 
Two springs. Attached to a bar. Attached to the basket. And as we load the basket, they stretch and recover. Stretch and recover. And here at the top of the spring, you can see two little metal wedges, which they use to adjust the length of the spring. Now, apart from the springs, the most important part of a weighing machine is the scale. And when the needle stops, it should record an accurate weight. Science Workshop camera team went to a factory in West Bromwich to see how they make sure of this. First, a blank dial is put onto the weighing machine, hiding the elastic springs. Then a pointer is fixed to the front. A 10 kilogram weight is put on, which stretches the springs and moves the pointer round. The place where the pointer stops is carefully marked in pencil. This is called calibrating. Now replace the 10 kilogram weight with a 20 kilogram weight. The heavier the weight, the further the spring stretches and the further the pointer moves round. The dials for all new weighing machines are calibrated like this. Using the pencil marks as guides, the next stage is to make a more permanent mark in ink and to mark out all the small divisions. There's a special device to help to do this. Each click around is one small division on the scale. The next stage is to print hundreds of copies of the dial for all the weighing machines that will need this scale. Now comes a very important step. Before the dial is fitted onto the weighing machine, the springs have to be adjusted. This machine will weigh up to 200 kilograms, so 200 kilograms is put on. It's just past the 200 kilogram mark, so the stretch of the springs is too great and has to be adjusted. To do this, a wedge in between the coils of the spring is moved. This can shorten or lengthen the part of the spring which stretches. When it reads exactly 200 kilograms, the dial with a scale on it can now be fitted. The next stage is to check every 10 kilogram mark. Now it's very important when checking the scale that your eye is exactly level with the pointer. Too low or too high and you don't get an accurate reading. When all the 10 kilogram marks have been correctly checked, the weighing machine is ready for use. Now when you go into a shop or a supermarket, you don't often bother about the weights of things. You just assume that they're going to be right. And that's because of the work done by the trading standards officers. And our guest this week is Alan White, and he's come to tell us what they do. Now, supposing that I were a shopkeeper, right? You come to my shop, what would you do? Well, the first thing I would do, David, is to check any weighing machines you may have. Mm -hmm. and here is your weighing machine. That's the one. Calibrated to one kilogram, and we use our working standard weights and placing them onto the scale. There's 200 grams put onto the scale, and it does, in fact, indicate 200 grams. And then progressively further up the scale to ensure that it is accurate. There's a 500 gram weight, which is half the load of this particular scale. And then this is moved around the goods plate to ensure that the same weight is recorded wherever the weight is placed. And so it can vary then? Yeah? It can vary if uh, the weighing machine is old or if there's any undue wear. And that's what we're checking for. I see. And then progressively to the top of the scale until finally we check it by putting a one kilogram weight on the scale and we see that it does indicate one kilogram. Now this is in fact a level proof scale so it means that even if it is moved out of level the indication remains at one kilogram that's despite the out of level condition. Mm. There. Yeah. I so see. I'm perfectly happy with that particular scale. Good, so uh, do I get a certificate or something? No, you won't get a certificate, uh, but if the scale is inaccurate, 
then we would reject the stamp that is on the on the scale anyway. So I've already got a stamp here, have I? So yes, it's correct. It's done by means of a steel cotting punch. And there's the Queen's crown, and yeah. there is the Enfield district number. And simply <coughs> give it a bash onto the lead, and there we see the crown impressed with the district number. Mm. Now that will remain on the scale while the scale remains accurate and legal. Uh, presumably until you come to test it again. But if you, when you come to test it again and you do find it's inaccurate, yes, right, badly so, what happens then? Well, I then take off that Queen's crown by uh, impressing on a six-pointed star and then knocking the stamp <coughs> off again and that makes the scale illegal for use because it is now unstamped. And what happens to me if I use it? If you continue to use it when it is unstamped, then you may be prosecuted. Thank you, Alan. Sure. And it's because of people like Alan and the very accurate standard weights they use for checking the weighing machines that we can be sure we're getting the weights we're paying for. Not all weighing machines are calibrated in kilograms. This one's also marked in pounds and ounces. Just under one pound. The post office uses a scale marked with the price of the stamps you need to put on letters or parcels. And this parcel will cost 125 pence to send locally. The banks use a scale marked in units of money. That's five pounds worth of silver. And this scale is calibrated in units I've never heard of. They're called catties. And a catty is a unit of weight used in Singapore. And my doggy weighs nearly eight catties. You'll remember how important it is to have your eye level with the pointer when you're reading on a dial scale. Well, this weighing machine has done away with that problem. You get a very accurate reading, and you'll be seeing more and more of these electronic digital weighing machines replacing the old spring and dial type. Uh, this is my favourite. Used to be lots of these on station platforms when I was a lad. Used to cost one penny. One old penny, that is. One D. I don't suppose many of you have seen one of these. 13 stone, one pound. Ah, nice feet your weight, so you do. Ah, used to have lots of fun on these. There's something you can have lots of fun doing. Find the instructions in the science workshop book. What you need is a yoghurt pot, some elastic bands, a strip of paper, sticky tape, pencil, ruler and a rubber. Now, it's a bit tricky to make, so we went along to Oak Hill Junior School. We got them to show you how to do it. First of all, you need to make a strong handle for the yoghurt pot. These children are using ribbon. You could use string. Cut the ribbon or string to the right length and make two loops and fix these firmly to the sides of the pot with sticky tape. Cut the other way. Right there. That bit there goes through to there. Next, loop an elastic band through the handles to join them together. A weighing machine needs a scale, and you can make one by hanging a long piece of paper over the back of a chair, holding it on with sticky tape and an elastic band. Make sure the paper hangs clear of the floor. To calibrate your scale, use 22 pence worth of copper coins. These weigh just about 80 grams. You may have to add one or two more elastic bands to give you enough stretch for the biggest scale. Make a zero mark where the top of the pot is when it's hanging empty. Then put in the 22 pence. Now make your 80 gram mark, again, where the top of the pot comes to. Now you have to mark out the scale in full. First, draw lines across for the zero and 80 grams. Then fold the paper so that the 80 gram line lies exactly over the zero line. That gives you the halfway fold, the 40 gram line.
Now fold the paper so that the 80 gram line lies exactly over the 40 gram line. That gives the 60 gram line. Then fold the 40 gram line exactly over the zero line. This will give you the 20 gram line. When the lines are all marked, hang up the scale again, and after checking that the pot is in the right position, your weighing machine is ready for use. I'll just check this scale. I'll just put this in. That's right, 80 grams. I wonder how much these scissors weigh. Well, it's just about 37 or 38 grams. Try estimating how much things weigh before checking them on the yoghurt pot weighing machine. Now, I'm going to estimate how much Lillian and Malcolm weigh. Right, Lillian first. Um, Lillian, hmm. I would estimate that you weigh 48 kilograms. Hmm? That's right. about seven stone, six pounds on the old scale. All right, there's your penny, stand on. Seven stone, six pounds. Spot oh, on. Bang on. All right, Malcolm, next. Uh, well, Malcolm, about 58 kilograms. Nine stone on the old scale. 16 stone. There must be something wrong with this machine. No, the machine never lies. It must be a car. Well, it was absolutely right with Lillian. How can it be right with you? 16 stone. What have you been eating for your dinner?